Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a fuel economy challenge with the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. If you guys are new around here, well, you should know that I'm absolutely fascinated by miles per gallon and fuel economy. Um, so it was only inevitable that I was going to do a video regarding that. In the current world we live in, it seems like a lot of people want to own an SUV or their own one. And just driving around town, I've recently noticed every time I go out, there just seems to be a new model of Volkswagen. They have like a new SUV out or a mini SUV. So I went on their website and I, I was absolutely um, startled how many SUVs they have in their like lineup. They've got like the best parts six to eight. Um, you can look at their configurator website and you can see so many, it's absolutely crazy. Albeit most SUVs here in the UK at least are diesel. So this 4.5 litre V8 petrol engine is not going to give you a good representation for fuel economy. But, like I said how earlier I was talking about a, you know, you have an SUV, but most people go for the SUVs over the estate, which is a smaller family size vehicle. So you compare like an SUV diesel compared to an estate diesel. People opt for the SUV diesel, which is probably heavier, but not much more practical, which is what I find quite confusing because obviously the estate would be probably cheaper to run so I'm gonna do uh, a sort of comparison it's not completely comparable but if you guys don't know I own a C63 which is essentially a C-class platform which is a, a, a saloon estate or coupe which is a normal family size car this is a massive SUV um, with a big petrol engine as well so I want to compare how these two fare against each other because I've already done this sort of challenge with the C63 that, that did around 17 miles per gallon combined with this sort of challenge you'll be doing today. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these two fare against each other. So I'm now going to fill up now and we will set reset the computers and I'll join you on the road a bit later. Okay, just putting up to the petrol station now. We are a bit under between a quarter and a half. It's got a hundred litre fuel tank, so I'm interested to see how much it actually costs to fill up. So yeah, I'll meet you a bit later. Yeah. 50 litres, cost me 96 pounds, 91 pence. Right guys, so I just filled up. Cost me about 96 pounds or something to do about 50 litres. Uh, and to reset the trip, we're gonna do it here. That should reset it. There we go. Right, now we need to reset the MPG average. You can view it here, but you can't reset it there. You have to reset it down this screen here, which I've already done. So let's not, I'll do it one more time to make sure it's completely um, consistent. Hold down for one second and now it's reset. So let's begin the journey. Right guys, let's begin this journey. So what will this trip sort of entail? So we're gonna be doing some town driving. We're gonna be doing some country lane B-Row Blast driving. And then we'll finish up with some dual carriageway motorway driving. So then, and then we'll return to the fuel station, fill up, gather our results, and then we'll see what happens from there. I think it's fair to say that the vast majority of SUVs spend most of their lives in places like Rygate, where they pick up their kids from school, and they shop at Morrison's afterwards. So I'm gonna exactly replicate that. I've got some imaginary kids at the back. Um, I don't have any of my own, so I had to improvise. And uh, I've kept them from school, and now we're gonna go shopping at um, a grocery store, and then we're gonna pick up some essentials, and then we'll carry on the drive from there. Always a perilous task of reversing an SUV into a space because they're just too small, and I've completely ruined that, so I'm gonna start again. But that is the perils of having an SUV. It's just too big for ordinary car parking spaces. I've got my reversing light telling me how far away from the, the wall. Beep. Oh, I shan't dare go any further. So yeah, let's get some essentials. Okay, so what did we get? We got some uh, chocolate milk because that's a given with me. Uh, got some bananas, nice and healthy, and some Listerine to get those uh, sugary deposits off of my teeth. Uh, they can just go to the back with the sloths. Have fun with that. Time to uh, fire it up. Put in the brake. Oh, nice subtle V8 rumble there. Right, so errands are now complete, so it's time to have some fun. 
and get these sloths home fast so they can have their dinner. Uh, we are now a national, so we can now go at very nice speeds and I'm gonna put it in manual mode by putting my gear selector to the side and I've got some buttons, my steering wheels, which does like the paddles, it's like a paddles basically, but we were talking like 20 years ago, so it was more fashionable to have these buttons on the front of the steering wheel. So I'm gonna put it in the manual mode now and absolutely go for it. I think we're in second gear. Hit 3,000 RPM and a boost comes and we're on song. Let's have this that engine. such a dirty evil soundtrack I, I actually love it and the way it goes over 3000 rpm and that, that insane turbo boost just kicks in it is great speaking of greatness let's talk about how great this engine is so we've got a 4.5 litre twin turbocharged v8 puts out about 450 horsepower and around 620 newton meters of torque and it would get to a rather brisk 0 to 60 time in about, I don't know, I think it's about 5.6 seconds. You may be thinking these sort of performance figures aren't actually that good in the grand scheme of things in today's world. But you have to remember that this car is the best part of 20 years old. And you also have to remember it's also lugging around around 2,350 kilos of weight. And then you also got to factor in it's got a 100 litre fuel tank, which is a, a substantial amount. So factor it all in, this is a very, very quick car, especially for when this was back in its heyday 20 years ago. I can't imagine how many cars this gapped. Time to do another pull. Nothing. 3000 RPM. It just gets through the speed very, very quickly. One thing we haven't discussed yet is what we're going to expect for MPG in this video. I looked at Auto Trader to see what their combined cycle is, and it averages around 17.8 miles per gallon, which I think is, I'd say, pretty reasonable for this car. I think it will roughly achieve that figure. I'm going to aim a bit lower. I'm going to say probably around 13 miles per gallon, maybe 14, just because I have been putting it in manual mode and I have been putting it through its paces a little bit. But now that we're on some more relatively straight and average roads, it may swing into its favour into the higher teens of the MPG. Right guys, we're now on the last leg of the journey. We've done the, the town driving, all the errands and stuff we did. We've done all the B road twisty stuff. Now we're gonna hit the dual carriageway for our last leg of the journey. Put our foot down, kick down. <laughs> oh, that noise, like never, it's just such a surprising noise. I, I don't have to really put in words. It's, it's just such an evil, dirty noise. I love it. So right now we're just cruising at 70 miles an hour. We're doing 2,000 revs. We've got our six-speed automatic Tiptronic gearbox, it's called. And if I'm honest, it's, it's quite slow to respond. Like that kick down in general did take a, a little bit of uh, persuasion and then it did start going. When you have it manual mode, the downshifts and upshifts aren't immediate, but we're talking about a 20 year old car, so we aren't expecting lightning quick uh, gear changes. You may hear a bit of noise around the cabbing, that is the silly wind effectors, which I still haven't got rid of, rid of yet. But yeah, this car is very surprising, especially on like the um, twisty sections, with it being all wheel drive, it does give you immense grip around the corners, but the way it goes round is, is genuinely surprising it feels very very heavy but it doesn't feel like there's so much body roll and now that i've got the steering rack fixed the steering isn't obscenely heavy as i first thought it was it's still quite weighted but it, it doesn't feel too heavy and it feels direct and it does feel good around the corners i really do love it and the way the car just like hits boost over 3000 rpm it, it is it's very different like these days power deliveries are quite instant and there's not very much delay but in this car it's quite nostalgic to have like lots of power but not be able to have all of it at all times you have to really work for it until you climb over the 3000 revs and then you have the boost and it, it is it's a great sensation although it may not, may not be like the most practical way of getting somewhere and getting through the paces of the car it still feels absolutely brilliant but 
anyway, um, we are now approaching our petrol station. What is our fuel need, we're saying? Before I tell you my digital reading, I just want to tell you what need, what, where I'm at the needle. So it has moved and we've covered 21.7 miles so far. And it has, it has moved a fair bit, not too much, but for 21 miles, I wasn't expecting it to move that much. So it's gonna be really, really interesting to see what sort of MPG we're gonna get. So yeah, I guess I'll see you at the petrol station. Okay, we are now at the petrol station waiting to fill up. We were here about 30 minutes to an hour ago. So I'm now gonna fill the car up and gather the results and then I'll park up and then we'll see what damage has done to my bank account. Okay guys, the journey is now complete. I have filled up at the petrol station. I've covered 22.6 miles. Uh, I have used 6.91 liters of fuel, which doesn't sound very promising. Uh, that cost me 13 pounds 26 pence. And if any of you guys are wondering, the current price of fuel, which is the 99 Ron, which is what I use, the Tesco Momentum, that is one pound 91.9, which is a lot of money. So. Now I've got all those figures, let's find out using my trusty calculator, which I use on the internet, uh, to see what MPG we got. Okay guys, now we've got uh, the calculator up. Uh, so the distance we covered was 22.6 miles and the liters of fuel used, let's just double check, 6.91 miles. So here we go, we've pressed calculator, we're gonna get our uh, result. 14.87 miles per gallon wow that is that's how do i take that that's that's not too bad that's not too bad all things considered i did the exact same drive with my c63 and that did around 17 miles per gallon so okay just all albeit it doesn't have as much power but it's got like an extra 700 kilos of weight so 14.87 miles per gun, that's not too bad. My computer down here says 14.5 miles per gallon. So they're not too different. The car does actually work in terms of its uh, calculator. I think the extra economical driving with the dual carriageway and the A, B road I did, that definitely helped the MPG because I have seen much lower figures with this car. I think when it's in town, it really does drink a lot of fuel but still or was it 6.91 liters to do 22 miles that is terrible that is terrible all things considered but anyway guys i really hope you enjoyed this video uh let me know what you guys thought of it and if there's anything else you want to see regarding the porsche kind turbo i would be very open to ideas and if you haven't subscribed already i would really much appreciate it because like 90 percent if not more of my viewers aren't subscribed and if please do like and even any comments down below are very welcome so thank you very much for watching and bye for now